Hi, I'm Michael Klein, and welcome back to the East Oak Studio uh, free video series. Today, I'm going to be doing a video talking about optical form modeling versus conceptual form modeling. And when I was a student in New York, uh, it took me a long time to figure out how to conceive of space in the picture plane as opposed to copying it. So <clears throat> in this setup, I have three examples that I'm going to cover. One is uh, painting from photography, which is the most common uh, way of painting today. Um, oftentimes people use a monitor. Uh, in this case, I printed out the sphere so you can see kind of what I'm going to be talking about with the optical um, copying. Then I have nature set up with a sphere that's going to go into some other principles. But let's get started with the picture, first of all. I'm going to quickly mix up a grayscale here, just so we have a point of reference. What I'm going to do is put a dark and a light, because that's, that's just so common in art schools. They tell you to find the darkest dark and the lightest light. So I'll grab a dark. I'll put it in back here. Now this way of thinking is what you're doing is you're taking a comparison. You're saying, is it lighter, darker, warmer, cooler? And the, this is very um, close to the way the camera works. A camera is looking at pixels, and it's copying a flat. So this is a flat plane translated to a, a, a canvas. So you're thinking at this point only value. Let's say I have this. Try to speed this up. A lot of instructors even go as far as to recommend placing the color up there. And you can see that it's lighter than what I'm looking at. So then I'm going to go darker here. And so they have you optically match it. So that's one way of working. Now I'll go into the sphere. This plane is turning down away from the light. So when you're looking at a photograph, see, I, I talk about, I just mentioned turning away from the light, the angle of the plane. But actually, when you're copying a photograph, uh, because um, you're thinking two-dimensionally. You're just thinking about if it's lighter or darker. So you'd be looking at that, and you'd be making a value assumption based off of what uh, your canvas is telling you. So you're looking here. You're saying, oh, the photograph is lighter. I'm going to come over and make my picture lighter. OK? So that's one, one real common way of understanding. It became extremely uh, common and, and taught in the 20th century because of Impressionism. They, they transferred from academic art, and they went outside, and they started, they wanted to copy what they were seeing. But with academic art, you're inventing, you're inventing the space. You're thinking about the, the perspective. You're thinking about the form. You're thinking about color theory, all these things, the anatomy. But when you're outside and the sun is dappling through a a uh, tree, you're just trying to copy this visual effect that's happening. So with photography, that's what is happening. People, they, they just look at it and they say, OK, I need to go lighter because when I make this mark, it's a little bit darker here. So I'll just grab some more white, and I'll, I'll go until I match it in the photograph. So to, to step it up and go further back into the tradition of art, we enter into the realm of uh, painting from life, because it wasn't as accessible uh, uh, photography and uh, the digital era, basically. So they had to rely on nature and work from life a majority of the time. Um, there's arguments and debates as to when the camera obscura became um, popular and how much they used it in picture making. But even if they did use it for some kind of 
mechanical transferring of, of uh, drawing, they, the artist still, it was much easier just to rely on uh, the information that was in nature. So in the ateliers and the art schools today now, they teach a lot of uh, cast drawing and painting from life, so painting from the model, etc. And what that does is it allows you to see the subject in three dimension, uh, which can be an advantage, but oftentimes the schools continue to teach the same mentality of this copying of photographs. So they just, the, the mentality is that you just look at nature, see now my, the values that I'm seeing are much more subtle uh, than the photograph that's printed out, so they're, they're higher keyed. But even in the art schools that rely on, uh, when I first started, I was in Minnesota, and that was influenced by Richard Lack, and it was uh, the kind of, the, the handoff that I got was still this idea of being able to see a lot of values. So you're saying, okay, I still, okay, I need to go lighter here, right? Because in nature now, I'm not looking at this anymore, I'm gonna take this down. So now in nature, I'm looking at it and it goes lighter, so my value structure is different, and you would just adjust it accordingly. So they, they have you do this thing, which is sight size, which is really common. Uh, so you can have your picture right next to nature. You can step back and try to match optically the two values. That So when you step back, it's, uh, it's visually the same effect. Okay, so I'll just work on this a little bit from life. So that's the second thing. We start off with photographs. The second way of working is from life. <clears throat> just trying to paint as quick as I can. See so again here, I'm looking, just thinking, okay, has to go lighter. This is, again, very common in art schools, uh, even if it's not an atelier. Um, the only kind of information that a teacher can pass on is what they've been taught, and oftentimes with the onslaught of Impressionism, they, they only know lighter, darker, warmer, cooler. So that's what you're left to. You just have to keep guessing at values until you get something that's relatively close. So when I look here, now my black that was in the photo, it's actually kind of a cool uh, neutral green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my neutral yellow and start adjusting this background color. See, now that's getting, now it's a, the, the value relationship that I'm now getting in my painting is much more subtle because I'm working from life and in uh, in nature it's always there's always just uh, infinite amount of uh, variety and value structure that's that our eyes can see that a photograph can't so now that so that's forgive this kind of sloppy rendering of this thing <clears throat> now I want to talk about the third aspect and that's to get rid of the get rid of nature get rid of the photograph and now I'm only thinking about the light source. I'm looking at my painting and it's conceptual form rendering versus optical. So forget about the photograph, forget about nature, and you enter into the realm of turning planes on your painting according to what the light source is doing. So you know that the light source has a moment in the sphere that it drops off. So there's gonna be a shadow line. <clears throat> So I went a little bit too dark, so I'm going to add some light to it. And see, so now for me, you can start to think about how this light drops off on the sphere as it goes back. And see, so this really subtle plane that starts to go back, I'm going to put my background behind it so I know where the rest of the sphere is. And when you get into this kind of painting, this is where I tell students that the picture making and the joy of painting and the control of what you're doing really starts to resonate and you, you don't become victim to what you're looking at. 
and you can start to actually tell a story, paint a picture, you know, create poetry, whatever kind of analogy you want to use, it's you enter into this other world on your canvas, which is this beautiful world of realism. Uh, you can, you can uh, start to enjoy the process because you're saying, okay, I have, I have control of my materials. I know what I'm doing because this is too dark and the light is hitting it here, so I just have to come up into the lights a little bit more and see, so then as I get up into the lights, this tips back and I'm lifting up the pressure on my brush. And so you start to feel in three dimension, you're pushing, you're pushing things around and you're, you're making sure that all these little planes are tipping back how they're supposed to be. Now if there's, if there should be more light up here, I can come back in with a bright light, start to kind of re-sculpt this thing, and just continue to feel out the form throughout the process. I'm going to grab a fan brush and kind of start to soften some of these. See, so now I'm, I'm starting to recreate the space as opposed to just copying. Now I'm existing inside the canvas and saying, okay, which way does this plane face? Does it have to tip? Does it drop away completely from the light source? So here I just have to finish out my shadow and make sure that that drops into the background. And there's a little bit of reflected light. Back to my fan brush. So this is kind of quick and clumsy, but you get the idea of as things are turning back, so if this is flipping up too much, I have to darken it down a little bit here so that it fits right into the context of how the planes are working with the light. When I was out of school, actually, after studying in New York, I started to finally understand the power of uh, being able to paint and control uh, your environment. And that the biggest click was when I started to do this kind of painting away from nature so that you're relying on your information as opposed to just relying on nature or a photograph. So thank you for joining me again on this um, optical versus form kind of concept. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. And don't forget to visit our website, uh, eastoakstudio.com, for tutorials that we have available. Thanks a lot.